Hi, welcome back to Digital Teacher YouTube channel. Please ensure to subscribe to our channel to get more updates of our videos. What are we going to be looking at today? Today we'll be looking at the digestive system. Looking at alimentary tracts, digestion, and the digestive glands. Come along, let's learn together today. Whenever you're dancing, walking, studying, or even having a nap, our body is always in constant need of energy. Similarly, the body system are always in constant work and they are in need of energy. The circulatory system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, the excretory system, the nervous system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, they all require energy. So where do we derive this energy from? We usually believe that energy is derived from the food we eat. As a matter of fact, that is partly correct. The food are just the source of energy. Energy is derived from two processes, cellular respiration, which follows digestion. These two processes help in deriving energy that is stored in the food. Essentially, the food we eat contains energy stored in the molecules in form of bonds. These bonds are broken and the release energy is converted to a usable form. So the breaking down of food into smaller and absorbable form in the digestive tract is called digestion. The digestive system consists of the mouth, the esophagus, the liver, the stomach, the gallbladder, the pancreas, the small intestine, the large intestine, and the anus. As we can see, the digestive system is a long tube and a very complex one. So we have to divide this system into different parts. For our conveniency, we'll divide the digestive system into two parts namely the alimentary canal and the digestive glands. The alimentary canal is a long muscular tube which begins at the mouth and ends at the anus. The diameter of this tube varies from one person to another. So, the mouth, the stomach, the small intestine and the large intestine are a continuous tube. So the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and the anus are all in continuation. So digestive system is a long muscular tube which have varying diameters at different locations and these varying diameters give us the various organs. The mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine, and anus. Let's look at what happened in the first two parts. The mouth, also called buccal cavity, is included in the alimentary canal. Why is this so? I thought it is only for talking. Actually, our mouth is directly involved in the process of digestion and as a matter of fact, it is the commencing point for digestion. It is involved in injection of food followed by mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. There are three major parts in the mouth which aid in digestion. They include 
the tongue, the teeth, and the salivary gland. They carry out effective breaking down and digestion of food. We will look at the salivary gland in details under digestive glands. In this video, we will focus on what happens in the mouth and in the esophagus during digestion. So in the mouth, the teeth help in breaking down food into smaller pieces. This process is called mastication. The tongue help in mixing the food with saliva and the salivary gland release an enzyme called tarlin which acts on cooked starch and convert it into maltose. So the food is swallowed into the esophagus and goes down through the esophagus wall into the stomach. Even though digestion does not take place here, the esophagus perform an important function. By forceful contraction and relaxation, the food is passed down through a process called peristalsis. The reverse of this takes place when we vomit, a process called antiperistalsis. So the food finally gets into the stomach where it is being stored and digestion continues. Let us look at what happened in the stomach in our next video. Remember to leave us a rating for this video and ensure to subscribe to our channel. See we come your way next time.